Meanwhile, in St. Louis Bush Memorial Stadium, strange things were happening. It all started sensibly enough when another flashy sophomore, number 43, Larry Brown, led the Redskins to a 10-0 lead over the Cardinals. The NFL's fourth leading rusher last year, Brown thrust himself toward the top again with 114 yards against St. Louis. But from 10-0 on, nothing went right for the beleaguered Redskins. It was another frustrating day and what has seemed like a year of frustration for Washington. The Cardinals, too, had their moments of frustration. Quarterback Jim Hart engineered a perfect screen pass touchdown to number 36, MacArthur Lane. But an offside call nullified the play. In the second quarter, Jim Hart himself was nullified by linebacker Harold McClinton, number 53. Hart's replacement, number 10, former Oiler and Chief Pete Bethard found some frustration too. As he hit number 44, smooth striding John Gilliam for an 85-yard touchdown, which was also nullified by a penalty. But Bethard found the path to victory in third-year running back MacArthur Lane, who carried for 146 yards and two touchdowns, which counted. For an additional touchdown, Bethard faked to Lane and passed to number 23, running back Johnny Rowland. But like the Patriots, the Redskins were finally done in by key interception. One by number 20, former Oiler Miller Farr. The clinching interception came about when safety Jerry Stovall number 21, cut in front of Walter Roberts and set up the Cardinals' final touchdown. MacArthur Lane put St. Louis over the top with a 27-17 victory, which will not soon be forgotten by Lane, by Pete Bethard, or by a lucky-to-be-alive Cardinal named Jim Hart. The following week brought the Washington Redskins to St. Louis, and it appeared early that the defense was still wobbly. The Cardinals trailed 10 to nothing in the second quarter, but things quickly changed. When Jim Hart rolled to his right, he was knocked down and out by Harold McClinton, setting the stage for Pete Bethard. Bethard quickly ignited the Cardinals. He hit John Rowland with a touchdown pass and number 36, MacArthur Lane, bolted in for another score. John Gilliam caught a perfect pass, but the play was called back. Miller Farr, the other half of the trade that brought Bethard to St. Louis, intercepted a Sonny Jurgensen pass helping the Cardinals to an easy 27-17 win.
Over 50,000 fans jammed Bush Stadium to see how the Cardinals would cope with scrambling Roger Staubach and the powerhouse cowboy attack. And the answer seemed to lie in an old quotation, that to win, you gotta have heart. At age 26, Jim Hart, number 17, seems to have finally hit full stride as a professional quarterback. But in the early moments, the anxious St. Louis receivers often had trouble catching the ball. While the Cardinals had problems holding on to the ball, Staubach had trouble holding on to his life. Two years ago, Staubach was riding the high seas as a member of the U.S. Navy. But the Heisman Trophy winner is discovering quickly that the waves are bigger and hit harder in the NFL. Jolly Roger was plagued by a pesky old pro named Larry Wilson all afternoon. Wilson picked off two Dallas passes and kept the Cowboy receivers off balance all day. Jim Bakken's two field goals were the only scores of the first half. But in the second half, it became apparent to the Cowboys that they were in for an afternoon of heartaches. In the third quarter, Hart's 16-yard strike to number 81, Jackie Smith, set up a seven-yard touchdown pass to Sid Edwards. Then in the fourth quarter, Jim let fly with a heart-throbbing 59-yard bomb to number 44, smooth-striding John Gilliam that gave St. Louis an unbeatable 20 to nothing lead. The Cowboys had been picked as the team to beat in the NFC East, but on this day they showed little. Only occasionally did Dallas display any of the firepower of previous Cowboy teams. Calvin Hill's fourth quarter touchdown prevented a shutout as the Cardinals stopped Dallas 20 to seven. The Cowboys found out that the only way to stop St. Louis may be to break their heart. With their record knotted at one and one, the Cardinals face Dallas, and a win would inject a needed shot of confidence into a team that was just beginning to believe in itself. Jim Hart mixed his running and passing games perfectly, and the defense held the Cowboys to only seven points. The game was broken open late in the third quarter when Hart hit Sid Edwards with a short pass and number 17 put the game out of reach with a 59-yard shot to John Gilliam, and the Big Red had an impressive 20-7 win. In sunny St. Louis, the Cardinals, co-leaders with the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC's Eastern Division, met the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans quarterback Ed Hargett had difficulty all afternoon penetrating the Cardinals' deep defense. St. Louis quarterback Jim Hart has one fault that has blighted his promise for three years. He too often forces home run balls when his receivers are covered. However, this year Hart has read zone defenses more consistently. Blessed with a brilliant receiving core led by number 81 Jackie Smith and coupled by a brace of hard running backs, the Cardinals are pressing the mighty Dallas Cowboys.
Against New Orleans, the Cardinals opened the scoring with a 74-yard touchdown burst by MacArthur Lane. The Saints tied the score at seven on a power slash by Tony Baker. But St. Louis came back with a similar touchdown by Roy Shivers that gave the Cardinals a slim 17-10 lead in the fourth quarter. Behind picture-perfect protection, Hargett waited patiently until tight end Dave Parks cleared his defender, then speared him over number eight, Larry Wilson, for the tying touchdown. But Hart fired the final salvo, a 49-yard strike to Jackie Smith, who beat number 29 Gene Howard on a deep post pattern as the Cardinals maintained a share of the NFC East with their 24-17 triumph over the Saints. New Orleans came to town the following week. MacArthur Lane put his team into an early lead with this dazzling 76-yard run. But the Saints came right back. Roy Shivers dotted off right tackle to give St. Louis a short-lived fourth quarter lead. Then with less than seven minutes left, Hart found Jackie Smith and hit him with a 51-yard game-winning pass. Final score, Cardinals 24, Saints 17. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, it was the Cardinals against the Eagles who were trying to avoid their fifth straight loss. And in the first quarter, the Philadelphians looked like a winner as Tom Woodishick's 57-yard bolt, combined with a Mark Mosley field goal, made it 10-zip. But the Cardinal defense, led by number eight, Larry Wilson, was not for the birds. Wilson's interception hurt the Eagles just as much as two fumbles earlier in the game had. All three mistakes led to touchdowns by the Cardinals' superhero, MacArthur Lane, number 36. His 125 yards rushing led to a St. Louis rally that saw them put 28 points on the board in the second quarter. MacArthur Lane was everywhere, but mostly he was in the Eagle end zone. Cardinal quarterback Jim Hart threw only one touchdown pass, and it was a 26-yarder to, you guessed it, MacArthur Lane. And if MacArthur Lane left the Eagles' defense shell-shocked with his four touchdowns, that was only the half of it, because the Cardinal defense dismantled the Eagle offense quarterback by quarterback. Norm Steed went first, and he was replaced by rookie Rick Arrington, number 11. But Arrington and his runners found that for them, there was no open lane to the end zone. The Cardinals' 35-20 win proved that they're tough birds deserving of first place in the NFC East. And if the Eagles plan to win any games this year, they'd better get started soon because time's running out. The Big Red moved to Philadelphia for their fifth game, and Tom Wittishek, number 37, put the Eagles out front with a 57-yard dash down the right sideline. But this day belonged to MacArthur Lane, a bright new St. Louis star. He slashed through the Eagle defense for 125 yards and four touchdowns and jumped into the top spot among the NFC rushers.
When time finally ran out on Lane, the Cardinals had a convincing 35-20 win, a 4-1 record and sole possession of first place in their division. More significantly, they had an offense which had dramatically come into its own. The seventh game of the season marked the return of Charlie Johnson to St. Louis, but a shoulder separation kept him in street clothes. Larry Stallings, number 67, had one of his strongest days, and rookie linebacker Don Parrish symbolized the hustling defense with this interception return. John Rowland picked up his first touchdown of the year, and John Gilliam hauled in a 46-yard pass from Jim Hart to give St. Louis a 17-0 halftime lead over the Oilers. The offense exploded in the second half, and their final score came on a revenge pass from former Oiler Pete Bether to Dave Williams. The Big Red had a 44-0 win and the first of a string of shutouts. The Boston Patriots came to St. Louis the following week, and the Cardinal defense completely intimidated their offense. They forced hurried, incredible passes, and then forced fumbles. Don Parrish again had a strong game. MacArthur Lane scored on one of his greatest runs of the year, ending up with three touchdowns, and John Gilliam split the Patriot defenders on a precision play that helped give the Cardinals a 31-0 shutout win, the second in a row. Next, a Monday night in Dallas. From the outset, the defense was phenomenal. Led by Larry Stallings, they thoroughly stymied the Dallas attack, chalking up incredibly their third straight shutout. It was a night when everything worked and even the punting game produced breaks. John Rowland set the stage for the offense with this 74-yard punt return late in the first quarter. John Gilliam scored next on a perfectly executed reverse, and the Cardinals led 14 to nothing. The fourth quarter was opened by two quick rolling touchdowns as number 23 rolled to the most explosive game of his career. Roy Shivers closed out an unbelievable 38 to nothing win with this equally unbelievable touchdown run. At this point, the Big Red offense seemed unstoppable and the defense was the hottest in football. Short man and Ron Whitby to punt for Dallas. On fourth down and 13, Whitby will hit it from about the 26 yard line. Low. Roland at the 26. Big hole is up the middle. He has one man to beat. There he, he should is. be home free. There he, is. there he is. Johnny Roland, great run. That was a low kick. We kind of pointed that out before. Those low kicks will get you in trouble. They didn't have uh, time to set up the rush. Roland caught that one, came right back up and split them. That's going to put them in trouble. They get some 74 yards for Johnny Roland. And Williams, the wide receiver, that's MacArthur Lane. He's out to the 33-yard line. Hart quick. Dave Williams out of bounds. Up at the 39-yard line, Herb Adderley covering. Second down, six, St. Louis. Johnny Rowland, tremendous hole on the left side of the line. 
He is caught by Charlie Waters. Otherwise, he might have run a long time. 31 yards to go on first down. And Hart goes deep down the sidelines. Adderley is there. He got a hold of it all right, but he caught it out of bounds. Got Hart has time. His pass for Gilliam. He's got it. He's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Lauderette takes this one at the 39. And Chuck is back to the 49. Ten yards. Mark Washington, the tackle for Dallas. A minute. Second down and seven yards to go. MacArthur Lane gives it away to Gilliam, the wide receiver coming around. He's got a lot of daylight. He's got one block from Williams. He can go all the way. He uh, breaks Charlie Waters. He's in there for a touchdown. 48 yards. John Gilliam. What a missed tackle may have from just, Charlie Waters. May have just have reconsidered that last statement. I don't really know how. Going. This is the first time I've seen these cats in a long time. And there when anybody hit him, but Charlie Waters did miss him down at the bottom. The first half, St. Louis leading 14-0. Jim Hart on first down, throws, complete to Gilliam. Look out! <laughs> Telling you, Mel Renfro at the Dallas 42-yard line makes the stop. Quick is an expansion team. I didn't really know that. Gain of 24 yards on the play. First down, St. Louis. That is MacArthur Lane. Look at the big guy moving. He's just inside the 35 to the 34. Redskins. Here he goes again. Leroy Jordan grabbed him, horse collared him as he broke in the middle and moved it down to the 26-yard line. Washington, a rookie from Morgan State. We will get a field goal try by Jim Bucken out of Larry Wilson's hold from the 31-yard line. Washington took a shot at it, missed it. The kick is good. Second down and six. Morton loses the ball. And the St. Louis Cardinals' Don Parrish comes up. And the Cardinals have it. First and ten at their own 46-yard line. Gain minimal. Call it second down ten. Morton throws. Intercepted by Stalling. There is Stalling. Uh, the left side linebacker for the St. Louis Cardinals dropping back to cover, picked it off, and St. Louis has it first and ten at their own 42. Healy is taller. Morton to throw. He gets his pass away, and it is knocked down. Almost picked off again by Roger Worley, number 22, a two-year man from Missouri. Well, they had that shot then, John. Hart will throw. He gets away from Pugh. That's MacArthur Lane. Lane coming out of the backfield, taking that little swing pass, gets it up to the Dallas 48-yard line, and that is a St. Louis first down. He moves up to cover Jackie Smith, who splits out. Here's Hart throwing the other way. Goes to Dave Williams. Williams gets loose from Adderley. And it's Chuck Halley, linebacker, coming back to make the tackle at the Dallas 27-yard line, and that's another Cardinal first down. MacArthur Lane is caught by Jethro Pugh by the face mask, and that draws all kinds of penalty flags. <laughs> I don't think there's any question he had him by the face mask. St. Louis at the Dallas 25-yard line. D.D. Lewis in at a linebacking position. That is Johnny Rowland. And he is down to the Dallas 11-yard line. Rowland wide open. Same Touchdown. Play. Well... You bet. 250 pounds. Second down and 10. Morton to throws. Passes away. Off the hands of Rucker. Intercepted by Worley. His second of the night. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's, uh, that ain't telling you much of nothing. Except that thing, that things are really going bad. On first and 10 of the Dallas 48. Lane again. And Herb Adderley gets a ride down to the Dallas 42-yard line. Before the season started, Ernie McMillan said it all. I'll complete it in a moment. First and 10 at the 36, pass to Jackie Smith. The foot race is on, and he is shoved out of bounds by Charlie Waters at about the three-yard line. Three. Johnny Rowland, touchdown! Well, they're not particular. They'll go right or left. 
Here comes Dahlbeck. Dallas 31, or rather St. Louis 31, Dallas nothing. Here comes Wilson. Dahlbeck cannot get away. Well, they let him have it. I'm at least glad to see they didn't try to kick a field goal in that situation. They went for it. Dahlbeck has all day. But he finally runs out of time as Cal Snowden, defensive right end, number 87, got him. From the end zone, Staubach to throw. His pass on the way, intended for Holman, and almost picked off by guess who? Larry Wilson. Full Spiro, and Lauderette at the 39. The young man from Rice comes back to the 49. Roy Shivers is in the backfield. Hart gives it to number 89, Bob Brown, the big tight end who came whistling around. And he took it. Johnny Rowland. Steve Kiner drags him down. He's got a first down. Third down and a couple of yards, and it's Shivers. <laughs> Look out. Adderley's got him with a shirt tail, but can't hang on. So Roy Shivers breaks it from 29 yards and goes in for the touchdown. On a bitter cold day in Kansas City, the Cardinals put their 7-2 mark and shutout string in jeopardy as they faced the world champion Kansas City Chiefs. It was a grueling four-quarter defensive battle. The Cardinal defense was finally scored on as John Stenerud hit on a 39-yard field goal. And Jim Bakken was called in with less than two minutes left to salvage a 6-6 tie. In Kansas City, it was cold. The game between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Chiefs was billed as the championship of Missouri. The symbol of pro football supremacy in that state, the Governor's Cup, was at stake. But just about everyone would have settled for a cup of hot coffee. Fans, players, and sportscasters were all searching for ways to stay warm. Kansas City's Lynn Dawson tried a glove. But unfortunately, he wore it on the wrong hand. It was so cold that players were as concerned with catching frostbite as they were with catching the football. The combination of bitter cold weather and rib cracking hitting made pass receiving a dangerous occupation. The Chiefs got the first big break when linebacker Jim Lynch, number 51, hijacked a Jim Hart pass and rumbled past midfield. The interception set up one of two field goals by Jan Stinnerud, the AFC's leading scorer. Stinnerud's field goal snapped a three-game St. Louis shutout streak and gave the Chiefs a 6-0 halftime lead. On a day when it was almost too cold to move, there was lots of action between the goal lines, but very few points. The Cardinal passing game was often effective, but when points were needed, the birds froze up. While St. Louis's passing attack was often sporadic, the Kansas City air game barely existed. The Chiefs completed only five passes all day, and their only consistent weapon was running back Ed Podolak, number 14. A fourth quarter Kansas City field goal attempt almost resulted in disaster for the Chiefs as number 22 Roger Worley nearly went all the way for what could have been the winning touchdown. The 
Cardinals salvaged a tie when Jim Bakken's field goal nodded the score at six. The pro football champion of Missouri is still unknown, but both teams have a bigger game in mind. It's called the Super Bowl. The Eagles came to town the next week, and the defense seemed capable of intimidating the opposition by its mere presence. On a disputed play, the defense stormed in and caught Norm Snead in a meat grinder. But the officials ruled that the ball was dead at the time of the fumble. Another freak play saw Jim Hart hand off to John Rowland, who flipped the ball back to Hart. And the play ended there, causing an outcry from a quarterback who thought he had a sure touchdown. The offense was still able to roll to a convincing win. Hart found Gilliam wide open for a touchdown. He then hit Dave Williams for another on a triple fake, including a fake and a round play. The 23-14 win gave the Cardinals an 8-2-1 record and high hopes for a championship. The Cardinals' hopes and division lead soon slipped away. In Detroit, both teams were tight and made mistakes.
but St. Louis made too many. Melfar's run gave the Lions a 16-3 win. The run-hot New York Giants stormed into town the next week. There were several outstanding plays by the Cardinal offense. This long screen to MacArthur Lane was but one. But the Giants were too hot to stop, and they dashed the St. Louis playoff hopes with a well-deserved 34-17 victory. The Cardinals ended the 1970 season in Washington, and again there were outstanding individual efforts. When number 56, Chip Healy, knocked this ball loose, Chuck Latterette proved his worth as a defensive fill-in, scooping it up and scoring. But Sonny Jurgensen's passes were on perfect target. A 21-yard field goal was missed, and the Cardinals lost 28-27. As the year ran away and a title vanished, it was still hard not to look back with optimism. In Washington, D.C.'s stadium, a visitor dropped in to see if the Cardinals could keep their slim divisional title hopes alive. But while Santa was dropping in, Washington's Sonny Jurgensen was dropping back. He hit Jerry Smith in the end zone for a score, and Smith, in keeping with the Yuletide season, revived an old, if somewhat costly, gift-giving tradition. The Cardinals roared back with a Smith of their own as Jim Hart hit Jackie Smith, who made an amazing touchdown catch. Although Cardinal quarterback Jim Hart was effective, he couldn't really compete with the radar-equipped Jurgensen Cannon. This 52-yard shot to the Flea Roberts set up Charlie Haraway's three-yard touchdown run. While Sonny remained on target, his receivers became targets, but they held on. And then it was Washington Smith again as he stared another score to put the Redskins ahead 21-7. Sonny's philosophy seemed to be when you've got a good thing going, stick with it. Jerry Smith again. And though he put himself down because he was short of a score, the Redskins did get a touchdown out of it. The Cardinals' hopes were failing, but they did get themselves back in the game on a 43-yard hookup from Jim Hart to number 44, John Gilliam, who sauntered smoothly into the end zone. And then the Redskins thought it was a gift-giving time again, Larry Brown's fumble was picked up by number 26, Chuck Latterette, who raced in to make it Redskins 28, Cardinals 27. But while the Washington offense was generous, the defense got downright stingy. They forced the Cardinals to go for a field goal from the 21, and St. Louis kicker Jim Bakken proved that there was coal in his stocking as he missed the gimme field goal. The Cardinals' title hopes had been dashed 28 to 27, and only one man dressed in red and white left D.C. Stadium smiling. <laughs>